Hi, welcome back to our Sabbath school um, study today. Um, managing for the master till he comes. We're starting a new quarter, and I'm glad to be here with Peter. And why don't we start with a word of prayer? Okay. Generally, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to study your word. As we start a new quarter, we ask that you would guide and be with us, and I'll just be with our uh, YouTube audience as well. We thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Okay, so new lesson. This is the, I'm putting it here on the screen. You, you see the cover of it, and I guess you could probably guess what this topic is about. Um, Pastor, do you want to give the, kind of a brief overview of this quarter and the topics? It's going to be interesting because most of the time when we think of managing, we think of maybe time, hmm. okay. and we think of treasures. Um, but this lesson is going to, Give us, I think the foundation is going to be, um, it's people and, and not so much as how do I manage others, but how do I manage the resources God gives us to help others. And especially when it comes to the gift of salvation. Mm, and, right. and so there are different aspects of what we can manage. Of course, um, yes, tithes and offerings will be talked about this quarter. But I think it's trying to give us a, a broader view of what it means to be a steward. Yeah, and there's various topics. You know, le next week we'll be talking about God's covenant with mm -hmm. us. Of course, what you just mentioned, tithing, um, offerings for Jesus, dealing with debt, laying up treasure in heaven, mm -hmm. um, unto the least of these and some of those considerations. Yes. So, uh, as well as managing in tough times. So, That's right. um, oh, and you can't forget, uh, beware of covetousness. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, one. that'll be in February and March. <clears throat> so, uh, this week's lesson is called part of God's family. And the memory verse for this week comes to us from first John three, verse one. Um, pastor, you want to read that there? I'll be glad to behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. So what I see here in uh, this week's lesson seems to be like uh, some foundation laying. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, there was an aspect of discipleship here because we're okay. just explaining some of the framework, um, some of the rules to the game here, <laughs> as right. it were. So um, let us go to Galatians 3, yes. uh, 26 and 29. So I'm going to read Galatians three twenty six, and you read Galatians three twenty nine. Okay. Galatians three twenty six says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So, what does that mean? I think connecting it to 1 John 3, 1, which is our memory text, yeah. um, it tells us that we are God's children. And the lesson makes this emphasis. There is basically no greater title, no greater position, no greater um, achievement than being God's children. Um, he is the creator. He is the king of the universe. And we have the privilege of being called, of being part of his family. Amen. Mm -hmm. Going all the way back to creation, mm -hmm. we can see in Genesis 2, uh, verse 7 through 9, it says, And the Lord God formed man mm -hmm. of the dust of the ground Amen. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And yes. man became a living being. Yes. The Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, um, and you can see in verse 15, you know, the Lord takes man and puts him in the garden uh, to tend and keep it. So, he creates man in his own image, mm -hmm. and then he gives him a job. He does. 
and very specific job yeah. to take care of this beautiful creation that he had made. But then you see, you know, there's the flood, and there's mm -hmm. Abraham, and there's this people of God that you just see the, the story of throughout the book of Genesis mm -hmm. and then through the rest of the Old Testament. Um, there's the children of, of God, as they're called. And it's this framework that just lets us know that there's this concept of, so if there's children, then there must be some type of parent. Yes. And when you have that together, that unit is a family. Mm -hmm. So when you hear people talking about the family of God, um, there's God, and then there is us, his children. That's right. And I think it goes even a step further in that then we are called to see each other as brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. which then puts everything into, again, like you mentioned, a perspective, a different perspective as to how we relate to one another. Um, Ephesians uh, 3, mm -hmm. verses 14 and 15 says, For this reason I bow my knees to mm -hmm. the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Yes. And there's a reference from the New Testament mm -hmm. that there's this family aspect again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people always talk about the, there's the chosen people mm -hmm. or the remnant, but on a more micro level, <laughs> it's like a family. Mm -hmm. And why do we need to establish this aspect? I think because when we see each other as a family, I think that should, it doesn't always, but it should instill in us the desire to serve one another, mm -hmm. to help one another in, in ways that probably we wouldn't if we don't know the person if we're not related to that person. And not to throw shade or anything, mm -hmm. but just look at your own life, mm -hmm. how you relate to mm -hmm. a close family member. Correct. Pick your favorite. We're not mm -hmm. going to tell. <laughs> but pick your favorite <laughs> family member and think about your relationship with them versus somebody random you meet at the grocery store during the week. Mm -hmm. um, there's no connection. You can create connection if you start talking, if you're, <laughs> I might not do that, maybe you're more into that. But uh, there's something that's different than, say, just somebody off the street, just somebody you meet at a conference. Mm -hmm. um, there's family, that's, there's that connection, and there's that mm -hmm. going back. So a couple other examples here. We have, uh, if you want to go Luke 11, 2. Okay. And maybe something else that, that is neat about this um, passage that you shared is that the family in heaven and the family on earth, they're united. Yeah. So they become like this one big family. But you mentioned Luke 11, 11. verse 2. Okay. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hmm. hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, and you'll see that echoed also in Matthew 6, 9. Um, just, that's the that's same, the same, same mm -hmm. thing, basically. But um, John 20, verse 17 is another illustration. But this is when he's teaching his disciples how to pray. That's right. You know, and what I like about John 20, verse 17, this is right after he has... Um, been resurrected okay. and we talked a lot about resurrection did, in this last, last quarter, quarter. Um, so if you're looking for some lessons about that or just talking about the story check um, in our 2022 Sabbath School uh, playlist here on YouTube John 20 verse 17 um, Jesus says to um, Mary uh, to Mary yeah mm -hmm. basically she thought he was the gardener and then she realized that it was Jesus uh, Jesus says unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God, your God. Hmm. Um, 
And another version puts it, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God, your God. So it's kind of like there's this, it's pretty consistent through the, the various versions. I'm just flipping through a couple others here. But there's this concept of, yes, he's my Father, but he's also your Father. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, it's like, go tell the disciples that, um, about the resurrection. So it's a step even further where, where Jesus basically calls himself our brother. Yeah. So imagine that, what, what kind of a relationship God yeah, is. Yeah, you deduce it, oh, mm -hmm. if that's my father and that's your father, Man. that's our father. That's our father. Which mm -hmm. rotates back to what we just read in Luke, mm -hmm. our father which art in heaven. That's right. So it's a nice uh, full circle here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to read a quote here real quick. Mm -hmm. It says, The family of heaven and the family of earth are one. Um, and that's what you referenced Correct. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just one of those quotes you can find as well in the Desire of Ages. Mm -hmm. But let's look at how God relates to us mm -hmm. um, in Exodus. So uh, this is in his relation with the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, Exodus 5.1. And I'm going to read uh, Exodus 3.10. Exodus 3.10 says, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Hmm. So how does this... We've just talked about the father aspect, mm -hmm. but then this is like a, a slightly different slant. How does do these verses, and remember Galatians, we just read Galatians mm -hmm. as well. What are they saying about God as he relates to us? He's calling them his people. And as, as if they belong to him, they're his... Um, Let my people go. Yes. Which... To somebody who's a complete narcissist and all mm. about himself, mm. it seems very in the face. Mm -hmm. And he didn't understand, but after a bunch of plagues, he began to understand. He got to understand. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, there's also that, that um, aspect of letting them go so that they can sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it, I think there's another aspect that's interesting too here, where um, the people mentioned here are also known as the children of Israel. Hmm. In other words, they're family. This is one big family, and God calls them my people. Hmm. And, and so maybe this, this again, idea of, of, of family in, in, in relationship to maybe other nations in which, um, yeah, they, they did not know God and, and were not part of this special group. So we are sons of God mm -hmm. through faith in Christ Jesus, according to Galatians. And um, Galatians 3.29, you know, we're Abraham's seed according to the promise. Yes. So that's a very different view than we might find in society. And based on of this view, um, you know, we've talked about the image of God, heirs of the promise, all these different things. What is our relation to other human beings? Mm -hmm. You know, we forget that outside of our actual family circle, our genetically family mm -hmm. circle, um, there's a whole extra group and mass of people. I think if, if, if people would treat each other as families, we would not have what's happening in Ukraine. Mm. That would not be happening. Um, if people treated each other as family, um, we would probably see more compassion, more um, generosity, more kindness, more um, sweetness. Mm. Um, in our society, which is something we don't see today. Anywhere you go, um, doesn't matter. 
what country, what side of the country, <laughs> um, you don't see it. And, and I think the, the lesson, or these texts also invite us to not just look at people who maybe belong to our church, yeah. or people who we grew up with going to school or people that agree with us or people that agree with us exactly it's easy to get a lot of people that agree with us yes that's what they call it preaching to the choir that's right <laughs> but so we're kind of establishing we have this family relationship mm -hmm. um, as children of God we also have that aspect that Christ is there as our father mm -hmm. um, or God is there as our Father, and Christ, His Son, is our brother. Um, but what about the world? There's this, this concept that we've established this family, but let's talk about the roots here. Mm -hmm. So Psalms, um, can you go to Psalms 24, okay. verse 1? I can go there. Psalms 50, verses 10 through 12, says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. Mm -hmm. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its fullness. Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Mm. So you have... Um, you've the the term the cattle on a thousand hills gets thrown around here it does. here and there whether mm -hmm. it's an old song or different things like that but it's just fascinating to me when I see if I were hungry I wouldn't tell you that's <laughs> right I, I, I can own take it. care of it mm -hmm. and um, but then there's the aspect in first chronicles um, and if you could go to Haggai uh, 2 verse that. 8 Mm -hmm. uh, First Chronicles twenty nine thirteen to fourteen says, "Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you." Amen. And Haggai 2, 8. And Haggai 2, 8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. So, okay, that's just a bunch of verses that are saying the same message. Um, everything belongs to God. If everything belongs <laughs> to God, then that means this church is not owned by this, Us. this uh, congregation Correct. or the board. Uh, the cars we drove here That's are not right. owned by us, mm -hmm. even if the title's in our name. Mm -hmm. um, the house that we um, sleep in at night um, doesn't belong and to we're us. paying mortgage for or whatever, mm -hmm. it doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. um, and when you put this whole perspective that everything, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, not only does it inspire within me like this awe, but it also um, lets me take my hands off for a moment and be like, what am I holding on to? And why is it about me? Because this is all about God. And then the more you think about it, the more you realize that, you know, uh, as Job said, <laughs> naked came I into this world and naked, naked I will return turn to the earth mm -hmm. so um, it's just things that you think are yours um, think again uh, let them go because they are gods and 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 I think it's this this again helps me know how to relate to things mm -hmm. and I think that's that's <clears throat> always the difficult and maybe practical application to this. How do I relate to the things that are around me and do I see them as belonging to God? And I think then it makes it um, much easier to do the right thing. When I know it doesn't belong to me, belongs to God, and this is what He would do 
in my place. Uh, another note on that Chronicles thing mm -hmm. uh, that I just was reading. Uh, you know, that's King David's prayer, but the whole situation leading up to that mm -hmm. is the process of um, basically David's desire to build um, the temple and or this house for God, mm -hmm. however you want to use the terminology. But he shares it with this prophet and in First Chronicles seventeen two, he says, um, "Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you." But mm -hmm. then God comes to Nathan that night and says, um, "This is a man of war; he really can't uh, mm -hmm. build this. Um, his son can do it." But David asks if he could at least draw the plans and get the materials together and mm -hmm. have some yeah, part in the process. Mm -hmm. um, but in essence, that First Chronicles 29 is saying we really can't take any credit for all these special materials because we're just giving you back your what own stuff. Yours <laughs> already. Yeah. And um, I think he, he, he saw the privilege of being able to maybe manage these things and, and do something beautiful with these things. And, and, and that really is what, what life is about. Um, using the resources God gives us, be it in time, be it in treasures, um, to do something beautiful to his honor and glory. I think we'll get more in depth mm -hmm. on a lot of those things mm -hmm. later, but it's coming back to our view of creation, you know, Genesis 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. And John 1, verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Psalm 33, verse 6, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, Amen. and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse uh, 9, again, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. So, um, at the end of this um, day here, and, and the study, just talking about God being the owner of everything. I kind of rotate back to that verse mm -hmm. from First Chronicles 29, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able uh, to offer so willingly as this? Amen. Are there any other principles that are expressed in those words that um, you know, re reflect the attitude or are at I our attitude towards God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, and and I think it's it's recognizing once again um, how good God is, how generous He is, and I think just the fact that He gives us life so that we can experience it and see it and be a part of it. Like you mentioned um, before, God could do this all by Himself. He would not need any one of us to. But he involves us in this amazing project of, of saving others, of letting others know about his gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. So you bring up that gift of salvation, which kind of trips us over into the next lesson about yes. resources that are available for God's family. Amen. Um, we all have resources available. And mm -hmm. as we talked in that previous um, lesson, previous quarter, you know, the greatest gift um, to us as his children is Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, who brings that forgiveness, who brings that peace and that grace for daily living. Mm -hmm. uh, spiritual growth and, of course, hope for the eternal life. <clears throat> um, John 3.16, you want to say it by memory? Yes. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a gift. And John 1, 12 kind of hammers that in. But as many as received him, mm. to them gave he power to become the sons of God, Amen. even to them that believe on his name. And I think the lesson points out in this day um, that salvation is that foundational mm -hmm. gift that God has given us. And it came at a price. Yeah. 
It wasn't free. It wasn't free. But we take it for granted. We do, because like, it's freely given to yeah. us. Do you but ever it, realize, mm -hmm. like, in life, you start taking stuff for granted? Yes. Whether it's discounts. <laughs> yes. Or because maybe your work gives you certain perks or something, you take mm -hmm. it something for granted for mm -hmm. a while, and then if that perk gets discontinued, then you're like, hey, what, come on. What happened? But <laughs> we take s such a great gift mm -hmm. for granted. Mm-hmm. And I think more so in our context where there are so many who do not have it. So yeah. because we have it, we think oh, everybody Everyone else has, has it, it. Obviously, but, but nope. Mm -mm. It's not the case. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verse 2 okay. um, says, For I am determined mm -hmm. not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ mm. and Him crucified. Yes. So it's kind of like the theme of our lives, mm -hmm. or it should be the theme of our lives. And if you're finding yourself taking it for granted, you know, go back and spend some time in uh, reflecting on the life of Christ. It's just something we can do, whether mm -hmm. it's the story of the passion or the Beatitudes. There's always something to bring us back into the thought process and... Um, I want to say understanding, but salvation is something that we're going to be studying throughout eternity. So I don't know if we're ever going to fully like understand, understand everything. And it looks like for Paul, it was the center of everything he did. Mm -hmm. It was really, there was no other topic, no other endeavor, nothing that, everything somehow was connected to presenting Jesus, even if he was working on this nice, you know, tent that he was mm -hmm. making. Yeah. He was a tent maker. He was thinking of how can I use this to let people know about Jesus. I love how he was just supporting himself through his ministry. Yes. That's, some, that's such a humble aspect. You know, everybody paints Paul up as this like uh, divine apostle. And mm -hmm. he was a fantastic apostle. He was. But he had a day job. He had a day job who gave him opportunities to meet people, yeah. interact with them, and share <clears throat> um, his hope in Jesus. Um, but just on a practical level, mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 33, um, but seek first the kingdom of mm -hmm. God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. So whether that is, uh, you pick the time of day that works best for you. So if it's first thing in the morning, that's a great thing, but maybe your mornings are rushed. Yes, give yourself to him in the morning, but maybe your evenings, you can spend mm -hmm. a little more quality time where your, your brain is clear. Mm -hmm. um, it's finding that time to seek first the kingdom of God and uh, study the plan of salvation. And what's beautiful, um, Peter, is that when we are seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness, the amount of resources that are available to us to accomplish <laughs> his mission, his work, is inexhaustible. So you see all those parables about for such as the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. you know, looking for the lost coin or um, there's having faith like a grain of mustard seed. All these different things are kind of pointing, you know, and searching for um, things in the Bible as for hid hidden treasure. Um, have you ever like looked for treasure? I have. <laughs> I've been in an archaeology dig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or even as a kid, I can remember, um, you know, being at the beach and hoping to find one of those yes. coins that yeah. washed up on the sea. Yeah, from <laughs> some sunken pirate ship or something. That's right. Um, there's this, uh, in Arkansas, there's these diamond, That's right. diamond mines and stuff. Yes. And you can pay five bucks or something cheap to just go in and, like, spend the day and can rent tools or it's a great tourist trap mm -hmm. and you can keep whatever you get so i went out there because i was like i had never been to this so i'm gonna just go try this out and there are people who lived in the area they're like well i mean it's i mean conditions aren't ideal ideally you would go after a rainstorm and stuff mm -hmm. like that which, you know have fun so i get out there and there's well, a lot of other people digging and it's hot outside and you're digging and you're like, whoa, cool, I found something. So you put it in your thing. So you go and, oh, I found something. And then, oh, I got some fire ant bites and stuff. But yes, I spent like half a day. <laughs> it was just digging it, away. It was digging. And at the end, I had this little thing, bag of little 
kind of clearish rocks and stuff. And I was like, well, maybe one of them's a diamond. So I go back to the park ranger, and they're, I guess it's a national park or something, okay. but or a state park, I think. But she like looks through, and she's like, oh, this is this kind of quartz, and this is this kind of quartz. And I'm like, surely that one must be. The, and this is this kind of quartz. I'm like, how? But like, you know, there's people that like really study this yeah, out. They do. And if I, I always think back to that one when I think about searching for hidden treasure, because... Um, I thought I was putting in the effort. Mm -hmm. I was getting my fire ant stings, and I was getting sore knees and sore arms, and it was hot outside. I was having to hydrate, and that was a lot of work, but I still didn't find the diamonds. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, you'll see in the news, somebody found some diamond That's in right. Arkansas and or something. And a big one, too. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like a lot of money. I'm like, wow, I wonder what part of the park that was. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of that um, aspect that there's some effort involved in seeking mm -hmm. first the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Um, Psalms 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Now that's a promise. That is a promise we can bank on. We can hold on. We can rely on. And that psalm continues telling us that he will provide for our food. He will provide a place for us to rest, um, still waters. Mm -hmm. you know. I think that's like the thing I, <laughs> I know tattooing is not mm -hmm. ideal, but like uh, I shall not want would be the thing <laughs> <laughs> to keep, because we get so into the mode of like life and yes. stuff and things and like absorbing our interests and the covetousness that seeps in mm -hmm. and you don't realize it until like, retrospectively you're like man that was i was why was i like coveting that i don't even need that don't but use it <laughs> that i shall not want is such a powerful aspect mm -hmm. that it comes back into my life a lot there's a, one of my favorite um songs is um on that i'll put it on the screen it's a great quiet song mm -hmm. you should look it up on youtube here um but you know i shall not want is the theme oh nice <clears throat> Um, Psalms 37, 25. I have been young and now am old, hmm. yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Incredible. Again, inviting us to remember that um, God's people will be taken care of. You shall not want because God will take care of you. Amen. Um, he's provided salvation, but he's also going to take care of the little things in Amen. your life. And a lot of times it seems like a really difficult thing to lock into gear and get in the mindset and whatever. Mm -hmm. But then it ends up being this process that ends up growing our faith as well. It does. And so you... <laughs> You benefit in all the different aspects. Philippians 4.19 mm -hmm. says, And my God, you probably know this mm -hmm. one, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And you can take it to the bank. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, <clears throat> switching gears a little bit here. Mm -hmm. uh, John 14. Uh, 15 through 17, can you read that one? I can. <clears throat> John 14. It says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And John sixteen thirteen piggybacking off mm -hmm. that says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Mm -hmm. So the promise of the Holy Spirit and invitation to um, keep his commandments. Um, continuing on the theme of resources, um, there is the passage, 1 Corinthians 12, mm -hmm. uh, verses 4 through 11. 
More gifts. I don't think we have time. I'm going to put it on the screen yes. here briefly and so you can look at it through it and scan it. But look this up later mm -hmm. this afternoon or tomorrow morning, whenever you have that chance. Maybe you need some inspiration of what to read about when you're seeking first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and you have your Bible before you. Um, that's um, spiritual gifts. It's something that um, God gives us um, and he gives to his children. And he gives to all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> basically in short, Acts seventeen twenty eight says, For in him we live, move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Amen. And um, that, was, that was in that sermon that um, Paul gave. Um, just... Briefly touching on this, as we're kind of wrap, we need to wrap it up mm -hmm. here. But there's two components as we're closing out today. Mm -hmm. um, there's the responsibilities for God's family members, mm -hmm. and then basically the concept of treasures and storage of such. Correct. <laughs> um, so we we're freely given mm -hmm. all these things. But um, could you read Deuteronomy six verse five? I can. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6, 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that's echoed in Matthew 22, verse 37. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Um, that's kind of a big task. Because um, you could look at Deuteronomy 10, uh, 12 to 13. Also. Mm -hmm. And now, Israel, what does the, your Lord require of you mm -hmm. but to fear the Lord your God and to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord with God with your own heart and with your mm -hmm. soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. And again, you know, First uh, John 5, 3 from the New Testament mm -hmm. is echoing that, but is also saying, and his commandments are not burdensome. Mm-hmm. Um, So how does this tie into this theme so far? So I think this is what, what the lesson is trying to show us is that um, as family members, we, we live by some house rules. Okay. Yes, and, and these house rules are important so everyone can get along and, and, mm -hmm. and do well. And, and these gifts that God gives us, um, again, is not just for ourselves, but to share them with others. So that the entire family benefits. And it's not just, let's say, in our case, the Christian family, but this is the world benefits as well because God wants to bless them. And by applying these um, principles that God gives us, we show that we love Him and we also show that we love others. So basically, so far we have mm -hmm. established that... We're part of God's family, mm -hmm. and God is owner of everything. That's right. And we have tons of resources available we to do. us. But just like if you were a king's son or somebody super in a place of great wealth, there are rules. There are rules. And there's, I mean... It's not a it's not a list. It's not an extreme list. Mm -hmm. There's places where you're like, oh man. You look at some of these documents that they come out huge. of institutions and stuff <laughs> like that. It's like, my goodness, who created every one of those rules? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but again, it's not from a perspective of this is what you must do. It's from the perspective of, I love God, so what can I do that's right. for Him? And I think that's, that's an important, important. Um, aspect mm -hmm. um, to consider. <clears throat> um, and of course, you can look up Matthew seven twenty one mm -hmm. to 27. But as we're kind of closing out, let's just touch on this one verse. Um, Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Can you read that? Okay. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hmm. So what can we take from that? That's an important text. I think this is probably the text that um, summarizes um, the principle that God gives us in regards to our relationship to things. And I think it's very human to want to store things. And the reason why we store things is because we lose things or we need things. I might need this later. Exactly. And all of a sudden, I have a lot of the same thing stacked up. While there are others who have none of it because I somehow managed to um, allocate all of it to yourself. That's right. And that's the story of our world. Some nations or some families with many resources, others with zero resources. And um, God is telling us to store our treasures in heaven. Um, if I mm -hmm. was recently at one of these hurricane disasters in Florida mm -hmm. and just to see the the just that obliteration strange. of mm -hmm. things and stuff hmm. beautiful houses gone beautiful mm -hmm. cars mm -hmm. completely trashed and underwater mm -hmm. non-functional anymore and people mm -hmm. have invested in boats just sitting up on the side or crushing a car and just like mm -hmm. each one of these has a story tied to it it was somebody's precious possession mm -hmm. and now it's just destroyed and um, it's just one of those things that God reminds us that um, don't get too tied down with what's here because that can also be gone in a moment but Mm -hmm. What's in heaven Amen. is what lasts for eternity. Amen. Um, there's a, for a quote from Steps to Christ that says, The heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us all heaven in one gift. Mm. The Savior's life and death and intercession, the ministry of angels, the pleading of the Spirit, the Father working above and through all, in an unceasing interest of heavenly beings. All are enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. Amen. And it comes down to, we have this opportunity for salvation. This is one of the mm -hmm. greatest things ever given to man. And this lesson referenced it a lot, and that's kind of the bottom line of this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, God has given us all these opportunities he owns everything, but he's allowing us to, how do you say it? To manage it for his glory and maybe also to, um, in, in, in a very strange way, to, to invest it and, and then see. And to share it. And to share it and, and, and seeing the fruit of, of what happens when we, put it to use and and i think that's the that's one another lesson that i take away from this is is these resources are given for them to be used not just to be stored hmm. but to be used if you have renounced self and given yourself to christ you are a member of the family of god and everything in the father's house is for you all the treasures of god are open to you both the world that now is and that which is to come the ministry of angels, the spirit of his gift, the labors of his servants, all are for you. The world with everything in it is yours, so far as it can do you good. Amen. With all these gifts that he's given us, mm -hmm. what is your choice? Um, mm -hmm. And we try to emphasize this a lot, but everyone's given free choice. But, um, you know... Psalms 116 verse 12 says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits Amen. towards me? And I Amen. want that to be the final thing that mm -hmm. you take away. Mm -hmm. We have all these benefits. Um, mm -hmm. What can we give um, to him? Uh, Pastor, can you close us in prayer? I'll be glad to. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the blessings we all receive from you. Especially the blessing, the greatest gift anyone can receive, and that is your son, Jesus Christ. We want him to be part of everything that we do today 
and in the days to come, especially as we begin this year. We want him to be the center of our thought. We want him to be the, the goal that we long to, to achieve, and it's to be more like him. And Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, this amazing gift that you give us as well, that we will um, cherish it, that we will let your Spirit change us and transform us, that we can use the resources that we have mm -hmm. to your honor and glory. We ask your blessing upon all those watching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next week as we study more about what God has for us and what we can um, give back to Him. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe and stick around on our YouTube channel for more great content. Thank you, and God bless.